Good evening, good evening. Hopefully everybody is okay. Running at the last second as always. I've been busy pretty much. Well, I'm always busy, so I guess that's a redundant question. Hopefully everybody is doing well. Uh, the topic at hand, I I'm constantly, constantly hit up or have people commenting on quitting on eBay or quitting reselling in general. Now, obviously everything takes time. We'll talk and address questions and things in just a little bit here, but I wanted to literally hit right into the, the topic. I hear all the time, there's no way you're going to make it. There's no way you're going to do this. There's no way you're going to do that. There's no way on earth you can make a full-time living reselling other people's discarded items. I hear that constantly. Oh my gosh. I thought that those days were long since done. When I first started doing this, 25 plus years ago when Yahoo Auctions was a thing and you could sell stuff on like message boards is basically what, what was around before Yahoo Auctions. For those who go back to my days, OG days on reselling, I heard it constantly. Everybody would ridicule us, make fun of us. You're never going to do this. There's no way. I did it as a sideline when I first started for, for tons and tons of my life, like a decade plus. I worked regional manager jobs, uh, general manager jobs, and I still did reselling, you know, three runs once a month. I'd do three weekends a month and I'd take one weekend off. Usually I had one day off a month, full day. And that was me for most of my life. I worked 60, 70 hours for somebody else and I did that on the side. Everybody told me there's no way you're going to do this. Every single person out there. And I hear people telling people right this minute that exact same thing. Somebody sent me a very long, detailed letter and she was very upset with with family members and things like that who kept pushing her to quit and do this and do that <clears throat> and this has been going on for six or seven months with her and I, it's somebody i've talked to probably it's a patreon I'll, I'll give you that much it's somebody who's been in patreon for quite some time um i told her we'd be talking about this i just was answering emails today this is one of the ones that was up in there too so fyi um <clears throat> And she held on. She kept holding on. She says, no way, I'm not going to quit. I don't want to quit. I don't want to be a quitter. If, if this can't be done by you, it doesn't mean you're quitting. So I don't want anybody to ever think that you have to be considered a quitter if, if this can't, can't do it. I did this part-time for a very long time. I, I would have not jumped into it full-time back in those days. It's a totally different spot in my life. But, you know, she actually held on for the six, seven, well, I think it's on month eighth. I think it's, I don't, I didn't, I didn't want to bring the email because I don't want to accidentally read something in there and identify the person. But um, I think it's month eight that she kept on after her family was begging her to quit and everything else. Well, now she's making enough to pay all of her bills. It, it, what, what did it take? It took her doing this for, what is a year and seven months or so, I think we've been talking. So she started a year and seven months ago. The first almost year of it, she, she couldn't even really pay her bills. Some of it's investment in cameras, some of it's investment in lighting and figuring out how things work. And obviously everybody makes the same mistakes, just like I did when I first started. You misprice things, you misidentify things, you make all the, 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 the stupid mistakes that you wouldn't make nowadays. Well, coming out of it, she held on. She held on. She, she knew that if you want something bad enough, you're either going to go for it or you're not. What did she have to lose if she didn't make it? Well, she had a lot to lose. That, that's another aspect of this. When you come to a certain point, like we did and a lot of other folks do, you know, you, you either throw all your cards in and say, you know, what happens, happens. If this is meant to be, it's going to happen. You know, when, when I got out of college, I didn't, there wasn't much going on. The, the bubble had burst and the economy was in the dumps. No one was hiring for any decent money. And, I tried to get out of foods. I did foods, foods and retail, brick and mortar as a first as a, <clears throat> a cook at one time way back when I was a kid. I worked my way up through the industry and I was a regional manager. I had $11.2 million under me. So I, I've, I've been around the block. I've done enough to, to, to of time. I, I didn't want to do that again. You know, I, I had to literally go to college to hope to get something else out of this. Had I thought about reselling full-time I don't know I would have still went to college but <clears throat> the, the, the point is that it's not going to be easy that's the biggest 
assumption everybody thinks is that you're going to be able to find it. I see everybody doing it. Everybody's out there finding this. They're finding that. All these great videos of people driving around and picking up just stuff right down the street from their house. Worth a small fortune and you're going to be able to retire and I can sell tennis shoes for the rest of my life and I'm just going to be just fine. I hear that that kind of, of thought. I'm not saying people don't you know, sell tennis shoes for a living and I'm not saying that any of this is bad business, but those people know more than I do to sell tennis shoes for a living. They, they, they know more than most everybody out there, the ones that are talking about doing that. <clears throat> it, it might go for me as well too. I know more than a lot of people in the categories that I sell in. I don't sell them in a lot of categories that other people do. I sell in very specific niches mostly. I do NOS, RA, wholesale, all that kind of stuff too. But with the my eBay store, I do share. <clears throat> it's all niches pretty much. And I had to know a lot about those items. I had to invest a lot of time, energy, and effort into them. It wasn't just me throwing something up there and then tomorrow, all my stuff selling for thousands of dollars. It, it, it doesn't work that way. But, but, again, but, if, if this is what you really want to invest your life, your time in, you, you love the, the freedom aspect of it, it doesn't matter if it's 2021 and the market's changing or platform issues or anything else like that. There's still people buying the exact same thing that were two years ago, three years ago. Not only that, there's more people buying the same thing. All, all you got to do is figure out where's the best place to find those people and get those items. And I know <clears throat> item sourcing, all that stuff, people can have drastic problems, drastic issues trying to get that kind of stuff. I didn't, again, same like everybody else. It took me forever. I used to drive around and do this and do that. Everything everybody else out there has done, I've done through it. And religiously, I used to do the garage sales four, five, six days a week in the summer. I was gone eight hours a day, maybe more, minimum, while I'm out and doing that. I'd hit everyone I could get to and all that kind of stuff. Driving out, calling on Craigslist ads and all that kind of stuff, just like everybody else does. Facebook wasn't prevalent back then. Neither really was um, Macari, Macrary, however it's pronounced. I don't, I don't even know how it's pronounced. I don't even really care. But the, the point of it is, though, that <clears throat> a lot of this stuff wasn't there. You had to figure it all out. And it's the same way now. There's just more things to figure out. You know, there's more sites, more options, more ways to make that same money. So 2021 adds more options, I guess would be the biggest point here. Things that we make ways i make money some of my revenue streams three years ago i would think it would it would be crazy for me to get funds coming in from <clears throat> dropping a link somewhere or popping a button out somewhere or just um emailing out or some of the other connections that i have i mean there's a lot of other platforms they're all niches though that's that's the problem that most people have with with other platforms if you sell in niches, if you sell in specifics, there's sites just for those, and there's people that go to those sites just for that stuff. So instead of it just being on eBay and Amazon, let's say the two big ones where they dominated everything, it's not like that anymore. <clears throat> Even though some of the other sites are smaller, some of the other options aren't as big or well known to you, just because you don't know of a specific site doesn't mean that millions of other people don't know about it. I mean, like uh, Dell Camps or something. I, I was, I had, I did a stamp video, just posted it before the show on Patreon. I've been answering emails on Patreon, and I was been talking about stamps. Duncan's in the house. I know I saw him. Big stamp guy too, and. Um, Queen Victoria was actually the, the conversation. I just got an assortment in the other day, and I'm probably going to put some in some videos. But, um, you know, it, it's all niches that, that allow you the options to list on other platforms, I guess, is the biggest point. And, and I don't think I've ever had this much success selling. I'm not talking about anything else but reselling uh, before on other platforms than I am right this second. And, and I'm, I, I know there's hip links. I know I, I have a deal with hip just for uh, if somebody goes and gets a store. I do have an affiliate link is the point. But aside from that, don't. that's not the point. The point is that the opportunities to get certain things and sell certain things on sites that allow you more opportunities is there now in 2021, more so than I could ever, ever remember. Yeah, eBay's got a little more difficult. eBay sales may not be as good. But again, you, you've got to realize where your sales are at. eBay had all the market. 
Now eBay doesn't have all the markets. So you've got to figure out where the rest of the market went. That's Once you figure that out, once you've played around with what, what the type of items you're selling or what you want to sell, <clears throat> the problem solved, I guess, is the point. Now I sell collectibles and things on even Amazon and in many other places. Etsy um, is a great place as well. Um, Hip, all these other platforms. But I sell more and more when you add that chunk up items off of platform off of eBay than I, than I ever have you know and, and because people know about these other sites stamp sites comic book sites there's postcard sites out there there's sites that just sell vintage fireman stuff there's sites that just sell buttons there's sites that just sell geez various types of artwork there's a site out there that has a ton of followers that's that you can actually make decent money that only does fantasy artwork there's rpg and in, in small miniature sites that only sell hand-painted little miniature figures and they go for hundreds of dollars the the <clears throat> the amount of options in 2021 in, in my book ha have grown immensely and and I used to be worried. I used to be all, you know, paranoid. Hey, you know, I'm losing it on eBay or this is going on and stuff. Well, we we figured out eBay and figured out how to keep it rolling and growing and all that stuff. But we still have all these other options and, and more and more money keeps coming in for those from those other options. And, you know, I, that's the point. We held on. I'm not saying everybody's going to be able to do that. If, if you're struggling and it's summer and you can't find things now, it's it's going to be worse in the winter. You know, and, and that's not trying to scare anybody or, or downplay play this. Obviously, I'm, I'm telling you it's a good time. I wouldn't try to discourage you, but <clears throat> don't think it's easy. Don't think that it's going to come to a point where you might be at your wit's end and just have to give it up or that's how you feel. That may come to that point, and you you may have to give give up this. You may not be able to make enough to keep yourself going. There's regional issues, <clears throat> sourcing issues, you might not even have a post office within 20 miles of your house, believe it or not. There's people that I've talked to who live out in the middle of nowhere. You know, so there's always different factors wherever wherever you're at. You know, it, it's it's surpassing those. It's it's to me it's a roadblock and it's it's something I want to be able to figure out. If there's an obstacle in my way, I, I get off on figuring it out and going past it and in and accomplishing it and killing that task, getting it off my I got a board, an active board, a board that I write stuff on. I got to do this today. I got to do that today. And then there's posties. I got hours. I got to put some hours in on labor for my son, <clears throat> stuff like that. That's those are those are the things I try to knock off. And stuff like this goes up on boards and I keep it until I can solve the problem. And I, I like that. And, and I guess that's part of it. Let's go to some questions, comments and things. I know I'm rambling here. Um, let me let me go back up on here. Hey, Mike, our Artie Mike's in the house. Hopefully you are doing well. Um, again, Patreons, I do have a video up. It is up live, active right now. It's a two-parter, this one. It, in fact, I was going to possibly do it at one more just to show you some actual examples of the ones I just picked up. So maybe I'll add another section or a different section of it. But it's like a half hour long or more, I think, the video that went just went up. Two Shilling Blues. I think there's one, I, I think I have one in that video, actually, now that you say that. Um, two Shilling Blues, uh, uh, it's like a Penny Black or something, I guess. I don't I do not do too much on stamps on YouTube, but um, I do talk about them off-site. Off um, my still, uh, sales are still good. Some stuff selling a few hours uh, after I listed. Sold an 1833 U.S. letter to a ship owner for 85 just now. The ship tie-in, I'm sure, is what sold that one for, Duncan, without a doubt. Most of the earlier, especially if it's, I'll, I'll throw one out here because he brought up something on here, <clears throat> a ship's letter like that. It's not going to have a stamp on it. It's going to have, um, it could have like a red circular circle with five cents paid or something like that. It could just have five cents written on it. It might not even have postage on it at all. It just depends. But those types sometimes are tied to like a navigation company that bought out all the smaller, littler ones. So smaller ones bought out all the small ones and combined. So maybe it's nothing back in 1833, but in 1850, that becomes a part of like a big major company, you know, red line or white stuff. I don't know, something like that. I've seen that before. Train, train stuff. So I've been selling a lot of train stuff. We listed a bunch of stuff just the other day and the same night it was listed, 
four different buttons sold and the the take we made 327 bucks back on those four buttons that sold all trains two of those sold because they were they were bought out by a big company other than that they wouldn't have had any any oddness to them because there was a bunch of little companies that all went to under but this is one of the companies that was bought out by somebody and that added a huge amount to the value the fact that it was part of a it was like the 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 founding fathers of that company this this little tiny branch that incorporated so the button that i listed was a tiny button i got 95 for the very first thing it was up for like 10 minutes literally 10 minutes so you know knowing stuff and getting the right stuff like like duncan's letter up there is is, is how you do this and how i do it easily i mean for what i'm doing it wasn't easy but it is now okay so you you learn you understand how things are you figure out shortcuts you figure out patterns you figure out you know how to fix your sales you figure out what works for you what works for me may not work for you what works for your friends may not work for you either it all comes down to your items your feedback your presentation your display of your items all that stuff 2021 it, it's it's more important now to get all that stuff down good seo keywords if you can do all that and you you get sinks in your head every time you're out in public and you well i can list that that way that i can list that way that's what i'm at if i'm in public i can't even go to a restaurant without looking at stuff i mean if we're out somewhere i'm looking at the value can i buy that can i do this and and don't discount the restaurants either i have bought stuff off of a wall while we were eating a tin sign before so don't tell me you can't buy stuff from other places i bought a thermometer from one once to a pepsi one it's hanging in my kitchen it's in some of my videos i bought that while me and the wife i think we only had one one child at that time we were eating in a restaurant and i bought it off the wall you know you never know you never ever ever know i don't discount anything in fact restaurant wise we've made a lot of money from restaurants that have closed and went under go in with other people one person does the furniture and appliances and you know i'm happy to take all the the parts and and, and electric equipment and you know the the paddles to an industrial mixer that you know i'm talking a big huge paddle that's the device that does the dough or whatever you're doing those are like four hundred dollars and most people don't have a clue so anyway i know i'm rambling so let's pop on down here hey marty <clears throat> how you doing marty jiminy flip it another fellow channel member here he needs to put some more videos out you need to get some more videos out there marty hey amy how are you doing <clears throat> i i worked in texas for a little while as a regional i used to i used to have to fly around and i did dallas and then we took um i took usda classes for hazup in dallas area too fort worth we drove all over too though but <clears throat> at one time i had usda certification <clears throat> I worked in a facility that we were inspected. We processed and sent stuff over state lines. So a uh, USDA inspector had an office in our building that he only had the key to. So, you know, you get to understand how stuff. I had to take classes. You have to be certified. And anyway, it's kind of like it. I have a liquor license still. It's probably expired now, I guess, maybe. But um, I was bonded and all that stuff, too. But let's see here. The old man's picks. How are you doing? Good evening. <clears throat> excuse me i've been talking all day i've been doing some uh i've got an, a, a new video going to come out on the other channel and i got a few things to show you uh, i'm going to show you a few things in just a few minutes here related to some of the animation stuff i got um we've been working on this quite a bit i've got a lot of it so it takes some time <clears throat> some of it had to be cleaned up some of it had some issues with it i'm a hands-on type of person so We've repaired, we've done some cleaning, um, all kinds of stuff to get all this stuff ready. So um, it's, a, it's a long drawn out process, but it's, that's what I love. But I got another video coming out on the other channel too, related to something really cool, um, some historical stuff tied to the horror industry, sci-fi. It's gonna be something pretty cool, but uh, some long forgotten lost treasures we'll talk about. Uh, let's see here, where are we going? <clears throat> Hey Dom, I, I just I just hit you back up just before the show actually, I don't know if you saw it, but I dropped you a I haven't picked up my phone all day Dom. Um, 
Hopefully you're doing well. Dom, I was on chatting on Dom's show last night. He runs his usual show, uh, as you as you will know. If you don't know who Dom, Primetime Treasure is, very good uh, friend of the show. You can click on, I think you can still do the dots, but I would recommend checking his site out too, his channel here. Primetime Treasure Hunter, a lot of good stuff there. Real good guy. I've known Dom for, geez, two and a half years. Maybe, I don't know, almost three years maybe. I've been on YouTube now for... I think we're going on three and a half years or something, somewhere in that range. Uh, Nantique, how are you doing? Good, good evening, good evening. Sandra L., welcome. Now let me slide down here. I know I'm a little behind. We'll try and catch up. Bob, hey, Bob, Mr. Hale. Busy place today. Everything was busy, man. I had to run out. I had to do this. I had to drop some library books off that were, were overdue. There's no fee here, but I still I hate, hate having it. And I had to pick up a couple things. I've shot this out before. You can get a lot of good reference material checked out from the library. No sense in buying stuff when you can have it checked out. In my state, if I need like a price guide or a reference book from somewhere, even if it's sitting in a university library, as long as it can be checked out from that library, even locally, I can have it sent to my local branch for free, any of it, anywhere in the entire state. And there's a link with Michigan so I can have stuff brought in through my university account, the university Toledo account, <clears throat> and still look at it that way as well, too. I'm an alumni and the whole works. We pay for the alumni association and all that stuff. So anyway, where are we at? Is this going to be a Don and Dom show? Not tonight, but yeah, there is going to be one. Um, he, we were just... I just dropped him a note on on a couple date information, so it'll be this this month. I think it's going to be. I think we said his channel because he was on. I think he was on ours on the twenty. I can't, I can't even tell. I think it was twenty fourth the last month, somewhere around there. That just rings a bell. The twenty fourth. Michelle, how are you doing, Michelle? Good to see you in the house as well. Phoenix resells. <clears throat> I I have a friend who lives in Phoenix. He used to do Fox, uh, the cartoon afternoon cartoon thing that started at three used to be done in phoenix phoenix has a a uh, big chunk of animation studios out there if you didn't know that and uh i got a friend who lives there i've been to phoenix actually seeing him a few years back um phoenix is nice i don't mind the weather so much i hate the i loved florida but i hate the mugginess down in the coast sometimes like in mississippi area alabama and down there it's just it's so muggy on the coast get out of the shower and you got to take another one because you're so sweaty the minute you come out unless you crank air conditioning 24 7 it seems sometimes but sometimes it's just nice to have the windows open and have the air blow in but anyway flipping in ohio how are you doing another fellow ohioan obviously i would say didn't mean to miss you there good evening michelle uh, let's see here. Carl. Hey, Carl. How are you doing? Another one from Florida there. <clears throat> I I used to pick in Florida for, geez, a decade plus. We used to go all the way around. Lakeland I was always happy with. Leesburg. Uh, a lot of little small shops. Claremont. There was a couple good ones in downtown Claremont. We used to, I used to hit the bike trail, me and the wife. We had our, our oldest, who's now almost he's going to have his... his um, uh, chemical and engineering degree any day but um, when he was like one we used to drive on our on the bike trail in Claremont and you'd drive down by the lake and then you'd have to go up the hill there and right there on the side of town in Claremont I'm sure there's somebody out there who knows Claremont who was watching because I know there's several in there but there was a, a antique store and a thrift store and the antique store the lady we we got to be friends with her and we'd go out to dinner with them her and her husband sometimes she'd watch our son because our son knew her and you know she had a room in the back and stuff and we could shop and my wife hung out talk and stuff and it was nice i loved i loved that kind of stuff i do miss stuff like that in florida you know i spent some time to a decade in florida and we did i still talk to friends from florida days you know almost daily some of the people we used to work at disney with you know you work with somebody for 10 years and you hang out y'all start at the same time and my wife started uh, at Disney right like two months after I was there, I think. I think it was two months. We were just talking about that, actually, the other day. Reminds me, I got to call somebody. We were we were talking about a conversation with somebody else. Um, where, where are we at? I'm sorry, my vision isn't so great. I actually live with one of these, if you know what these are. I have to use those constantly. Um, Donald's Discoveries. How are you doing, Donald? Mr. Lowe. Hey, Charles. Again, for those in Patreon, there is a new video up. Um, it's 
basic, giving you the easiest things to look for when you're out there sourcing for stamps, at least my best take on it. It's the best way that I think that you'd be able to find something anyway. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Trina. Trina Sirk, how are you doing? Good evening. Picking Northwest. How, NW, I'm sure that's Northwest maybe. Or something along that line. Howdy back. Junk and Data Girl, how are you doing? You'll have to go through the rest of that box, Junk and Data Girl. Trina, again, let me pop down. Jeff Loftus, how are you doing? Oh, Susie Q's one, how are you doing? First time live here. Well, glad to have you on board. B. Devlin Vintage. There's a button manufacturer, Devlin. That's the last, the name of the company that made buttons for the U.S. government for quite some time. Uh, thank you as well for the, the kind, kind comment. Uh, let me pop down a little bit here. And S, well, welcome as well to the first live show. If you're enjoying the conversation, please hit that thumbs up. I've got 216 people in-house on my end right this minute. So if you enjoy it, please hit the thumbs up. I really try to give you honest, sincere um, comments, questions, and, and, and information on all of my shows. Um, it is all learning along the way and learning from mistakes. Best thing that can happen is mistakes and failure. Why? Because you learn from them. I would say the exact same thing. I have never taken a mistake or so. I made a mistake. I'll, I'll give you a true mistake I made yesterday. Here's here's a true story. I and You can look. It's a Washington um, button. I think if you type in Washington Transit, maybe. Somebody, I I was accepting a whole... I, we sold... From 4 o'clock till I went to bed yesterday, we sold $540 worth of collectibles. And the story I share with you, just in that small time frame. The, the phone was going off. My phone was going going off. Um, in fact, I put it down when I was listening, when I was I was on Dom's show, actually. But it was going off, and I just decided I would, I would go to the laptop and, and do that. So I put my phone down. It was constantly going off. And I was getting these offers in from the same guy. One person bought six... Uh, uh, state of Texas state seal buttons from the 1870s through the 1880s. You can see them in my store. I think they're in, I think the, the bin number they were in is maybe, maybe it was F, is it F? Oh, I think it's G1 something. You can look and see if you, if you, those who follow my store. And then I was selling those and then I had sold somebody else, St. Lawrence Health or St. Lawrence Hospital, it was a New York buttons, and they were buying some New York buttons. And this other button came in there, and I, all the offers were in the same. They were $20 or so, I think, for every one of the ones that I accepted. I know the, the Texas ones. Well, this other person sent me an offer, and it was $2, and that button is $34.50. I already sold one of those same buttons for $27.50, and I didn't realize I did that till this morning. And I said, well, what could I do about that? You know, should I cancel it? I'm like, no, there's no way I'm canceling it. It's my mistake. I personally did that mistake yesterday. I just was accepting. I figured it was the same thing. Boom, 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 boom. I, I had to accept a whole bunch of offers. And I, I got into the pattern $2, or it was 20, 20, 20, 20. I think I sold every one of those Texas ones for 20. And then two of the health department ones were 20 apiece. And then a $57, the this, this St. Lawrence Hospital button, I think was 57.50. And so I, I gave away a button. I lost twenty some odd bucks on that button. I, I I got on that same one though. It's it's one of the ones I have the X in the title, which means I got a whole bunch of them. So, you know, I still have I think nine of that exact same button. And I just added one more to the quantity, and it looks like two sold. And now it looks like one's there, and it says hurry up supply. And there's only one left. So actually, I guess sometimes it does help. But I messed up. I gave away a button that I could have easily got twenty five or better for, you know, for two bucks. You know, I, I, I learned my lesson. I'll never do that again. I'll never sit there. That's why I don't, I hate the phone. That's that's why I'm not a big phone person because I wouldn't have, I would have caught it on a laptop on my phone. It cuts, it only shows like part of the, the thing, you know. And eBay's phone app is is a limited app. It only has certain features. And I hate hate having um, limited access to my account. So anyway. Um... But Carl is 100% right as well. Let's see. Anna S. trying to put the time and research in to retire at 58 from teaching two years out. Very, you got two years that you've got enough time to, to well be a pro in everything you want to be in two years. You just can't slack off. I worked, I worked a 60 plus hour a week job. 
I was a salaried person in, in restaurants, retail, the whole works. <clears throat> I've ran Cracker Barrels as a general manager, Applebee's as a general and higher, um, Einstein Brothers as a regional. Um, I worked for, I ran um, way back in the day, I ran an Eckerd's photo lab and then I was promoted. I took uh, a job as a as a assistant general manager at a J.C. Penney's. They were owned by this. Eckerd's was owned by J.C. Penney's back in those days. But you know, I, I've I've done a lot of stuff. It's possible. I, I've always done reselling when I worked for somebody else in any of those jobs I just said. Well, not all of them, but ninety five percent of them. There wasn't reselling around. At, you know, prior to a certain point. So. Anyway, my, my work career goes way back, probably more than most of you. I'm older than a lot of folks, probably. Um, good evening from Lakeland, Florida. Kevin Hawthorne just mentioned Lakeland, Florida. I know, I know somebody, we still know somebody who lives in Lakeland, Florida, actually, right now. Uh, it's time, uh, it takes time to build eBay from scratch around eight months or more of constant listing the right things. He, hear, hear that? That's constant. This is from Duncan here constant. Uh, I never let off the pedal. I ne I don't watch TV. I don't watch anything unless it's a movie with the family or something. I don't watch anything because if I got time to watch, I'm just sitting there wasting my time. I can sit here and list something and get something for my time. So when I want to go out and do something, I, I can do it. I, I, I don't have to worry. I t when people say you work too much, you're always doing this, you're always doing that. Well, when I want to take off, I can do it. I, it it's not going to hurt me at all, you know, dropping anything I want to do and move on because I work enough so I can do this. I'm getting older. I don't want to be working this many hours, you know, when it's time to retire. I want to be able to, to, to relax somewhat. I'm not going to stop working, but I want to do it now while I'm, you know, fit and, you know, you never know. I've got eye vision issues I thought I would never have just a few years ago. You know, who would have thought, you know? So things change and there's, there's not much you can do about certain things. So I want to make sure I'm covered now while I can. Um... Galveston. I've been to Galveston. We got Shelley Middlebrooks in here too. Uh, we've been to Galveston, I think once or twice. Uh, they used to do, I think we had crawfish down there, I want to say. I think they have a parade or something, or they used to, I want to say. Uh, Jasmine's Beauty. How to price the item on eBay? I also, each Dr. Lori, but still confused about item pricing. Well, you look them up on eBay. I mean, that's the biggest thing you do. eBay is where you can figure out most of your pricing. If you got a store, you got Terapeak. You can use Terapeak. You can pay for WorthPoint if you want to. Um, I don't pay for WorthPoint, but I do pay for uh, Pop Psych. And I've paid. I've had a Pop Psych paid account for. Geez, I mean, it's probably going back 15 years or better. It's a record site. It's a way to get pricing data for the last 15 years on all things media and records. And I've used that site for, as I said, like 15 plus years. And they have that much data on there. If you're into records, you know Pop Psych. You gotta know Discogs is probably first choice and then Pop Psych would be in there too. Um, Discogs, you can't always, if you don't know how it works very well, it might be a little confusing to track down prices, but I use that to see because there's more data on Discogs, but again, I pay for some things. I pay for pay for that. Um, I also pay for a button site sometimes too to get their printed button book. They they send out a an auction guide, and I always like looking at the auction guides because you can write stuff. To, I, I it's I like the hardbound guides. That's why you know I, I like um, like like Heritage or something. Some of their guides are really good reference material. But anyway. It's gonna, uh, yeah, it's gonna uh, jazz, Jasmina's beauty. It's gonna depend on what you got, of course, too. Retrohead, how are you doing? Well, thank you, thank you. Read your latest article over on e-commerce. Well, thank you. I got another one. In fact, I was just talking to I know. I just got a, a message from her. I think it was today or, or last night that I got to respond to. Um, I have another one in, in next month as well, obviously too. Um, I do write for somebody else as a ghostwriter, just FYI. Um, I, I, I enjoyed my time in college. I enjoyed the creative writing classes. I've got a book that um, is probably going to be published, and it's not going to be, it's going to be published under uh, a gnome de plume. I've got another name that I go by, but I don't want it related to my business. I think I've shared uh, one, one or two chapters, maybe even three chapters with a few folks out there. Some, some folks may know what I'm talking about, but I love writing. I love. 
I love stuff like that. I love the the graphic nature of it. I love the visuals of of reading in general. But um, yeah, but thank you, Retrohead. Uh, I think pricing, this is Donald's discovery, I think pricing might be the most difficult thing for me, but at least putting high prices means you're not going to get cherry-picked. That's exactly right. Y you can always lower a price, but you can't raise it if it sells. And I, I constantly tell people that. Here, here's another thing that I, I'll argue with anybody to the day I die that I'm right on this. If, if you're looking up prices and there's only a half a dozen or even up to a dozen of something that's sold and that's the only information you can find on it, the majority of those people are going to base what they priced it on and what that item sold for on what the few people they found before them did. It, it's like a chain reaction. If you list something for 10 bucks and that's what it sells for, it's going to show up in the ended listings. The next person who looks is going to go, oh, it's 10 bucks. I'll go ahead and list it for 10 or 15 and hope to get 10 bucks out of it. Well, I'm the guy who comes around and puts 57.50 on it because you sold it for 10 and the next guy down the line sold it for 10 and I'm like, you know, why are you putting so cheap a money on it? And I'm the guy who puts 57.50 on it and I get that 57.50. I don't know how many times. Even if it's only 20%, even if it's 5% of the time, I get 57.50 for it. The rest of the items I may not get 57.50 for, but I'll get 34.50, 27.50, and if it's been up for a long time, I may lower it. But these days, I've I've come to the conclusion too that you can keep these things high and just run sales. That generates more business than dropping the price. That's what I see out of it. Especially when you run the sale, you get the watchers. From the watchers, then you can get some more purchases from other items you have that are, are similar. When they go to checkout, they'll be shown you got this, all these other things similar to it. So <clears throat> in some aspects, some of what eBay has done, some, again, I'm not saying the majority of what they do, but some of what they've done, once you, once you, I buy vintage collectibles too that, that we collect certain things. So I buy from there and, and if you pay attention to what they're doing, how they, they propagate the information around an eBay, you can use that to your benefit. You know, you can use that stuff to your benefit and, and uh, sometimes you have a have one of those lights goes off in your head and you go, oh my God, I, I, I can't believe I didn't get that. You know, and, and that happens to me still after all these years because they change stuff. So I've I've been playing eBay's game and I figured out how to how to to get those sales still coming in when they're when we're fighting them like the the stupid search results and the item specifics they have improved the search results though i'll have to say because now on like if i'm looking for weeble versus weebles i get the same search results i don't and it doesn't force you into a specific category at least on my end it doesn't so it may on somebody else's it may be tied to your browser history i'm i didn't look into all that yet but anyway i it has gotten better for the most part sales wise i can't complain i have no complaints honestly with my sales are still right in line where they should be um if, if you're not having the the, the sales success again you got to look over your items i think it was carl maybe that said good item well duncan i think you have to list good items that's something else is going to take time just as carl was saying it's going to take you time to figure out what's good and what's not good i look at stores all the time and I, I think probably a good chunk of them, no disrespect, this is business, I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell them that some of these items I wouldn't even have listed. Because, again, you don't know until, until you're, you've done this for a while. I listed things that weren't worth my time or effort. You know, once you take into account, like, you're, if you're photographing certain items, you're wasting time instead of scanning them if they're paper. You're, if you're doing clothing, you're, you're, your max amount of clothing is probably seven to ten an hour of clothing stuff. I can do 45 pieces of paper an hour, you know. So all this comes into play with, with, with your business and, and, you know, where you're going to take it from here and how you're going to advance it and how you're going to grow it. I mean... I cut off stuff that took longer to list. I cut off stuff that took up a lot of space. And I didn't care what it was. I don't buy big electronics even if the money's there because I don't want to mess with it. I, the return rate's higher. I pick items that there's almost no chance of returns. I pick items that there's a strong following of a small, solid group of people. Um, again, it all takes time. You understand the type of people that buy your items. That's a huge plus, too, especially if you're in vintage collectibles and stuff like that. I got 273 people in the house right now live. 
108 likes. So if you're enjoying the conversation, please hit the thumbs up. Helps the channel, at least promotes it. So really enjoy it. Please hit the thumbs up for me. Let's hop back over here. Um, hang on. We are not sourcing until we have 500 things listed. We have that big of a death pile. Hustling full AZ. Don't call it a death pile. It's not a death pile. If, if you're running a successful business, it's called backstock because you need it. You have to have backstock. When everybody out, when everything locked down from the pandemic, I have so much stock. I didn't have to worry about it at all. I already wasn't sourcing. Unless I get a phone call, I don't want to miss my pickers. So I still pick up from people that rely on me to buy stuff to help, you know, them make money. So I still pick up from those folks, even if I don't need it, even if I, you know, I still want to keep those connections. But it, it's never a death pile. It is back stock and it's important. Everybody has to have something sitting on the side that's pure money. Now, your 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 goal, though, if you have back stock, don't call it death pile, that's just my take on it, is to take out the stuff that you know you can at least get a quick flip to get all your money back. All of the vast amounts of records and postcards and just a, a tons of stuff, hundreds of thousands of individual items I have in, in here are paid for. 99.9% .9 of everything I haven't listed is paid for because I listed enough from those purchases to pay it, get my money back, cover my labor for the folks who scanned and listed it, and make a few bucks. Every single time I get a big bulk lot in, that's what I do. And I almost always buy bulk. Oh, literally, almost always, unless I am just happen to be out. For me, that's practical. I don't do random drives. I don't do garage sales or any of that stuff anymore. I've I've come to a point in, in my experience, my abilities, where I don't have to waste. To me, it's a waste of time around here because there's not much good stuff out in the wild as much as there used to be. Garage sales are picked over the night before these days, and I'm not going to drive around in the night hoping to catch somebody putting stuff out the night before, trying to hit them up to look at it. And that's what happens here religiously all the time. I gave... I was... It, it, it's a madhouse. People are pushy. They'll cut you off on the road to get to the sale if it's something good. Couples will go out there and they'll drop off one of them and they'll spend hours at estate sales before they open, come in the night. It's just... I, I'm not going to do that. That's just too much time wasted. Time is money for me too. And it is for everybody out there watching this... As people have already said, time is time is important. Your time is part of the, the investment you put into anything you do. If I can spend less time listing specific items, it means I can list more items. I would let, rather list uh, bulk quantities of items than just a couple an hour. Value for value-wise, what I'm looking at stores like clothing-wise. If you're selling a $25 shirt and you can only list, say, eight of those an hour, that's only $200 of list value an hour. I can list 45 $10 items and get $450 bare bones minimum because that's the lowest I list for that same hour time frame. And you, you've got return rates. If you're listing eight shirts for $25, you probably are including free shipping in that. You probably paid two to say four bucks for those shirts a piece. My items, I paid a penny, a nickel. I'm listing 45 of them. Average price is way higher than... I, I, I don't list many 9.99 items. Uh, it would probably be in the 27 to say 34 range is where most items I list fall into. So that would mean 45 items valued in that price range. 30, 34 bucks. So, you know, the, the, the items amount you can list per hour is what you've got to be worrying about. Who, who cares what, what the item is? If you can make it work, who cares? The, the, the amount of items up means that I'm going to sell 3 to 5% of those bare bones minimum the very day they list. And I can show that to you every day of my life. If we list 100 items, we're at least selling three of those, at least bare bones minimum. I don't think I've ever sold less than 3 to 5% the day I list anything, you know, and we list quantity. So one day we might list three or 400 items in one single day. So we're selling a dozen plus items from those listings that day, right off the bat. And it covers my labor for the people that listed them. It covers the investment I had into the items. So all the back stock is back stock. It's freebies. It's all the, the plus stuff. I'm making the money on the, on the front of it. So the back end of it means all the stuff can sit here. I can pull stuff out and I can rotate my stock to cover as much of the category and give me a footprint. I've had a 90-day plan forever, you know, and that's that's the best way to do it. Rotate what you have, keep active in multiple niches at the very same time. It's going to draw you the most people in. 
run the sales. Don't mark the, don't change the price. Run the sales because then you get the watchers. And the watchers then are advertised and eat, not paid advertisement. I don't promote anything. I haven't in a year and a half or whatever since they did the, the first rollout on that. I don't do promoted listings at all. I don't do free shipping at all. I charge uh, first class three ounces for every single thing I ship out through eBay. So they're paying three to four bucks to ship a $10 postcard here in this country. And I, I don't have issues. I still have my sales. You know, if you know how to do it, you, you leverage yourself right, you're, you're going to be good to go. But it takes time again. It takes time and you've got to invest into what you're doing. There's no other way around it. There's just no other way around it. I've not found the way. Maybe there is some way for somebody who gets lucky, but for the most part. L let me show you where we're going with, with the animation lot. Again, I picked up a ton of entire segments and scenes from all Pink Panther from the 90s. Every Tons and tons of it. They're all like in complete scenes. I pulled out some of the neater ones that I was more fascinated with. We've been cleaning these. Some of the, 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 the actual original drawings were stuck on the back and we've had to carefully um, box them and humidify them to get them to pull off and stuff. There's, there's a bunch to it. I'm not going to give out all the secrets, but I've I've been into this stuff for a while. This is the biggest assortment I ever got. This is obviously Pink Panther on a boat. It's a big, huge scene. I've got... We've been working on this one for a little while. We're going to show you, like, the whole animation setup, this, this, the whole works on this one. Let me show you a few more and show you how, how some of this works here, too. This is what we've been doing in the background, some of this. I'm working on my own animated thing. We've been doing it for more than a year. I've got $5,000 or so invested into it. These actually have blue lines on it on here. The blue lines do not show up. This actual cell here, the black lines are done through a Xerox process and they use the original drawing, which I have right here as well. Certain items aren't on this one cell here. Let's, let's, I think I got the right one that goes with this. See if I can line them up properly. I don't think I got them lined up quite right. Let me just do this. So there you go. You can kind of see how it all goes together. There's Pink driving the boat. This is a scene, and you'll see this all broken down. The whole works. You'll see the different cell layers and all that. It starts off with him and a little tiny boat, and he's dart, uh, darting back and forth. It's like a minute's worth of the entire segment I got. I got like one eighteenth of the entire episode just with this one scene here. But and he bounces all over the place. This is a really nice scene here too, actually. Too fine quality work, as you can see. This is uh, coming out soon. I do have the video worked out. Um, I've had Evan, I've been trying to have Evan do some of this for me too, another one of our employees here. So this is this is some of the stuff I'm doing behind the scenes. We did some of this today. We I actually have an animation disc, if you know what that is. I, I applied for Disney Animation Studios. I actually got, through the entire process, I got to go back behind the scenes and they actually, Disney paid for me to take life drawing classes at Valencia, which was through uh, UCF, University of Central Florida, when I worked at Disney. And uh, in fact, if you know what the Maitland Art Center is in Florida, they actually purchased one of my pieces. And it's it, either it's on display or it's part of the museum's uh, permanent program. Uh, Valencia itself bought one of my pieces from that show. I, I had a show. They, they put my stuff in a show there. That I was picked to be, be in one of the shows. They put me on. Uh, I was in the Orlando Sentinel for that one, too. But... Um, I'm in the Florida State Purchase Program because two state entities bought some of my artwork. I don't know if, if those who are in art probably know what I'm talking about, but the Maitland Art Center owns a piece of my work. They spent, I put some crazy price on it at the sale, and I thought, ah, oh, there's no way, no way I'm going to win. But I took first place on that piece, and then they bought it. So I was really, really elated. But anyway, I don't drink or eat or do anything with sugar, just unless it's natural. So. I'm a big juice guy these days. Cutting out sugar, straight pure sugar was just awesome, I have to say. But anyway, let me pop down here. Uh, pricing, we were there. Um, MW, Don, try and watch you every day, always, and for more our formative. Thanks for what you do. Been selling with eBay since 1998 and still learning. I still figure stuff out, I mean, recently. You know, you'll figure out some some awesome sourcing place like a honey hole or something like that. And, you know, you'll have never thought about it. And then out of nowhere, you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe I didn't go there. That's led me on. 
on some wild adventures and, and stuff and reselling. I mean, I could tell some stories on stuff like that, but you know, it, it's once your mind's open to the fact that you can get items in this place or that place, there's there's not many places I can go where I can't can't buy something that I can make money on these days. I don't like to go to the mall because then we we do the lunchbox store there. I do the the GameStop and I make money in the mall. The last two times we went shopping in the mall, I made enough to pay for all the clothing and our dinner. Buying basically RA items from stores in the mall that had clearance sales. You know, it wasn't my intent, but I can't do that anymore. Because then we always, we make it a game these days. We paid for our whole trip to Hocking Hills last time, and we made a game out of it. The family's always done it. The kids know what to look for in certain areas. They'll come and get this, get that, and... I sold enough records to pay for an entire stay at Hawkin Hills in a nice cabin with a jacuzzi. Well, it was a hot tub, not a jacuzzi, but a hot tub. And it was on the side of a mountain. And it was just beautiful. It was awesome. I think I've posted pictures. We went there in the winter, too. That was just incredible. Hocking Hills near Columbus, Ohio. Just an incredible place. Um, Hustle Fu AZ, though. That is a good point, though, with listing 500 items. So I, I wanted to address that. I just kind of lost my train of thought on there. But... If, if you keep buying and you never list, you're going to be out of business too because you won't be able to get enough listed quick enough to get your money out if, if that's the case. If you're just starting off, you're probably living item to item sales. That's what a lot of people are. And if you're if you're living from one item to the next item, you got to list a lot of stuff. You know, I've been there. Don't don't get me wrong. I, we, we ate ramen noodles for a very long time while the kids ate the good food, you know. Me and the wife did what, it, what we took. When I graduated college with a master's degree i couldn't find anything around here and i couldn't move my mom's getting up there my my aunt passed away not too long ago i lost my uncle not too long ago my mom's uh she had, all, all of her siblings have passed at this point and you know so i don't i have no interest to go anywhere else i guess is the point you know so i we made the best of it we figured it out and i said well what the heck i see other people doing reselling and, and that's where we've been at so you know, I've been reselling full time for almost 14 years. I want to say it. It would be right now. Yeah, I think it's 14 years full time. That's all I've done. I haven't done anything else. So you know, I I know a lot of stuff. Not because I'm conceited or I'm some. I know it all. I, I've done it for so long. If you if you if anybody out there did this for 15 years and you're you're, me you're mixing up and messing up things or you don't understand this, you don't understand that. I don't get it because you if you've done it for 15 years you should at least know all the base you should be done with all the easy mistakes and, and and you should have the solid knowledge by that point. If you do anything for that length of time you're going to it's like a it's like a pro pool player. I had a friend when I grew up his name was John and he he he, is, he had a pool table in his basement his dad was basically a pool shark but I learned from him. Man the dude was just mm. With his pool skills, he could bounce the, the cue ball over ball. I mean, it, uh, stuff that you see on TV, but, you know, he used to do pool shark. I've been to a few bars. It led to a few fights, so I, I didn't go along when he did that anymore. But he knew his pool stuff, let me tell you. Uh, I like pool, if, if anybody hadn't known that. Um, and if you I live in Florida, um, we used to go to Sports Town Billiard on, um, what was that street? I can't think. It's downtown in, in, in Orlando. Sportstown Billiard. That's not an OBT. Orange Avenue. It was on Orange Avenue, I think. Um, and they had free pool from four to whatever with, you know, house drinks at four. It was a Disney hangout. We They had bleachers there to sit, and we had the same thing. I always slapped on South of Heaven um, by Testament. It was the first song we listened to every single day we were there. South of Heaven by Testament. Um, anyway, I know I'm off on a tangent there, but... Bob Walters, a.k.a. You Can't Beat My Deals, Biggest Year Ever, Shotgun or Rifle Approach, Become an Expert so that people will call you with items. Yeah, people call me with stuff, too. I got another call to buy a mass of, like, 50 pounds of buttons the other day, actually. Yeah, it, it depends. It just depends. Biggest Year Ever, yeah. Let me pop down. Nicholas Tracy, how are you doing? And to say on eBay since 97. Ah, okay. Royal T, well, thank you very kindly. I'm a vintage reseller and I have learned a lot from your show. Well, thank you very kindly. 
and as I'm overwhelmed by people saying I have to be on all the social media platforms, that's just not me. Should I throw in the towel if I don't do... So I, I don't do social media at all for my eBay items. I don't even advertise my store. I, I get a lot of complaints from people that tell me I don't, don't put out my store information at all. My store is shown in every single What Sold on eBay video that I do. So if you look by my playlist, just click on the one that says What Sold by eBay. My store name is there. But I'm not trying to market anybody my stuff on social media ever. I don't think I've ever marketed one of my eBay store items anywhere but on eBay. And I don't even pay to promote them on eBay. That's, that's just me. There's depending on, I don't I don't I'm not a big social media person. I know I'm on YouTube, but this is this is different. This isn't the same thing. I, I'm I'm almost never on Instagram. I don't I just post links half the time if I even do that. I, I'm same with any of the sites. I'm like Twitter or Facebook. With family and political and po I don't like any of that stuff. I'm not I'm not motivated by any of that. It's crap to me most of it. I don't care what somebody ate for dinner or any of that kind of stuff. I know sometimes I'll post something specific, but it's more along the lines of getting rid of sugar, I guess, is the point. I don't eat sugar anymore. And um, I don't know. I'm not a big social media network person, and I don't think it's essential for most most of this. I don't even do it for my YouTube channel, hardly. I mean, I know I post links out, but I don't, I don't have time. I'm a reseller, first and foremost. If you're going to be dedicated, I don't, I don't see as... as Social media is necessary for eBay. Maybe Poshmark or some other platform or something. It's a totally different story. But if you're just on eBay, I don't think social media at all is essential to anything you're doing. Unless, let's say you're an artist and, and it's very specifically you. Yeah, you want to promote you. If, if, if you're selling oddball things and it's not all the same type of items, you, it's, it's hard to promote yourself on social media because none of your, your family and friends are going to want to know about something they don't collect or to see posts all the time. If you post that on social media, you're going to lose a lot of people who are just going to mute you, I would say, I guess. I don't know. That's my take. I don't think social media is necessary to be a, a seller, and I don't think it's the, the case at all. As long as your items show up on a Chrome search, which 99.9999% of all of my items do, I think there's six out of 30,000 listings or whatever it is that don't show up and it's some crazy thing that's that's not even tied to an issue with me or my listing it's some way eBay I think has it categorized or there's some glitch because the the ones that they say aren't showing up changed so it's got to be something to do with eBay because I didn't change anything with it again if you're enjoying the conversation I got 334 people in-house 164 likes so please hit that thumbs up if you're enjoying the conversation um yeah, I, and I, I personally don't think social media is necessary for the majority of, of vintage and collectibles and stuff. If I've got enough of a specific collectible up, every person who collects those items is going to know who I am. End of story. It doesn't matter after that point as far as I'm concerned because my my base of people I want to buy from isn't somebody who's going to watch a YouTube video or randomly look for something on Facebook in my in my personal opinion in my experience as well too I know who my base is I know who the majority of the people that buy from me because I talk to them you know far too many people don't pay enough attention or don't reach out or say hey at, what, just curious why were you interested in this item or you know why'd you pick this stuff like that you you can get you know, a 20% boost in, in what you do and how much money you make by talking to the people that buy from you. And nobody gets that, it seems, these days. It's like, it, I treat it like a brick and mortar where you talk to your customers. Like, like if you're if you're in retail, the, one of the biggest things you can do to stop, like, theft and to get more sales is to talk to your customers and see if they need any help with something. You know, and, and a lot of people miss that because they just, oh, I'm, I'm just going to throw it up on eBay. I don't have to worry about anything. There's people out there that tell me they, they won't even answer questions at all. I'm sorry, but most of the time when I answer a question, I get a sale out of it. In, in fact, there might be somebody asked me today. In fact, there are a bunch. Somebody asked me uh, earlier, just before the show, about I told you I get I've been getting a lot of sales and about combined shipping. I sent out offers to watchers for a bunch of die cuts, and it's the same person. They're all birds, so I didn't want to stop. If you're doing offers to watchers and they're all the same type of items, send all those offers out before you do anything else because they're probably the same person. Unless it's something that you just listed, but let's see. Yeah, I just sold another card. I was gonna say there's something else out there. Hang on just a second. Sorry, I know I'm, I'm distracted. I'm not a big fan on that. That's why I don't do it too much. But anyway. Uh, 
doing? Bob, oops, heat wave in California, power outage, probably to protect against wildfire from pole. Yeah, that's crazy too. Uh, sorry to hear that, Bob. Duncan, niche or niche? It's it's pronounced both ways. There is no no stated version of it. So for those, either it's either way you want, and that you can look it up yourself. It's either way pronunciation. I say niche. Um, yeah, see, Prime Dom said the same thing. I looked that up because people said I was wrong. I'm like, I heard that in college for you know years. I've I've always said it that way, and I've even seen it on TV. So I looked it up, and sure enough, not only did I look it up, I called a professor I know. So I know I'm right on that one. Um, in the English language, it's acceptable either way. Just FYI, there's a few other words that you can get away with doing that too. Um, Rosella Review, how are you doing? Maybe throw a dirty towel used for oil leaks at social media. I'm not a big fan of social media. Niche, yeah, Marty's a niche guy too. Queen Victoria stamps on covers are some of my best sellers. Yeah, I love covers, and in fact, I talk about that in that video that I, I was talking about. Um, uh, covers, I love. I keep a lot of them though. That's the only problem with stamps and covers. Hey, Rob, how are you doing? I'm not going to try and butcher your name. I know I've butchered it probably three or four times already. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to. Yeah, I'm not sure on French. Pineapple on pizza, Duncan. Yeah, I've had pineapple on pizza. I'm not a big fan. I do like anchovies, though. Anchovies and green olives on a pizza. Thin crust. That's like the best. I don't eat much pizza, though, because I got dairy issues, so. Which side? I'm not sure what you're talking about. I've named a bunch of sites today, um, Etsy, Amazon, eBay, you can sell in Walmart, um, there's Hip Stamp, Hip Postcard, Hip Comic, Dow Camp, Poshmark, uh, Macari, Macari, however it's pronounced, um, there's a bunch of sites, even Ruby Lane, but I'm, I'm, I would stay away from Lu Ruby Lane, that's just my take, um, let's see here. I was frying at Brimfield all day in 90 sun and I'm exhausted. But hi, hey Annie. Brimfields is in Massachusetts. I we flew into Boston. We went into Logan early on two well, this is a long time ago. Like uh, two days early and we came in I didn't have to be there till Monday and I could have done the the last flight out on Sunday or the red eye on Monday morning, the the first one out on Monday and got there that day. But we flew in Friday night. In fact, I think my boss even said that was fine if I was going to take my time off there. And I think they paid for the hotel even for us. I had the per diem, which paid for all of our food too. So me and the wife flew up there early and we did Brimfields for a couple days. I've never made and bought so much good stuff, I think, in my life uh, other than there. Uh, there was a couple places up in Washington. There was a uh, big, huge community thrift store in Laurel, Maryland, that we did extremely, extremely, extremely well every single time we went there. I mean, little tiny doodads worth hundreds, and that was the that Laurel Community Thrift Store in Laurel, Maryland. I, I've I've never gotten so many good Nintendo games in one. I had hundreds and hundreds of them all in one big one big huge purchase out of that. And it was cheap. I couldn't believe it. But anyway, I know I'm rambling now. Some random guy, definitely pineapple on pizza. I'm not a big, uh, I'll take it, you know, but I, uh, anchovies and green olives are my personal favorite. Only if you include, a, I don't like sweet, I don't like much sweet. Served with strawberries and whipped cream, no. Uh, just reached one year on eBay this month. This is Sandra L. The struggle is real. I am still learning with uh, persistence, hard work involved to get a, the bills paid. Sounds like she's getting the bills paid, though. I, I get frustrated when people I, I when people get reach out to me and they're people that I've talked to for a while and they've watched some video and they're they're talking about well this person says all I got to do is this and I'm I'm gonna make it I'm like there's far too much people pushing how easy it is to find everything and that's their whole whole stick they're getting they're getting their money from the videos and not from 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 buying the stuff and, and that's the ones that they get drive me nuts because that's not giving you anything i don't watch tv because i don't get anything out of it most of the shows are crap these days there's not much that i'm really into those types of ways so you know it's it, it's it's 
I feel like people are being misled to some extent. People that, that I, I care about, that I've talked to for quite some time in some of the groups I, I'm, I do stuff with, this isn't easy. And, and anybody telling you that it is is just crazy. But if you keep at it, you don't give up, you list all the time, you, you're constantly looking for better things, better ways to do things, saving time, researching stuff ahead of time, figuring out what you can sell that can allow you to list a few more items an hour that it can lower the amount of photos you have to take, that are easier to price, have more chances of you being able to dominate and get a huge footprint in those categories. Those are all factors that will get you more money. They'll get you more money. There's just no other way around it. I mean, if if I need some more money, all I got to do is list some more items. End of story. That's it. That's all I got to do. That's all I got to do. And that's not me feeding you some money. If you got good items and you, you figured out the sourcing part, all you got to do is list a few more, spend another hour a day, two more hours a day, if that's what it takes. You know, if, if I had to work 14 hours every day to get it going, that's what I'm going to do. You know, I, and if you don't want to do that, well, then you're in the wrong business. There's going to be times when you may have to do that. Fourth quarter, fourth quarter, if, if you got it going on and, and you got your stuff going on, you can you can be rocking the whole fourth quarter, you know. And he's saying there's a place with excellent pickle pizza. I would do pickle pizza. My wife's from the South originally, and I had never had a fried pickle until we went down South. Um, come to find out, too, they do fried pickles up here, but they're they're hot and spicy at Tony Paco's. Um, but I love pickles on stuff now, you know. Peppercinis. I never used to like peppercinis, but have a fried peppercini. And oh, my gosh, those are good. I would do I would do pickles on pizza. Uh, can't beat Hawaiian pizza. Oh, see, I'm not a huge fan on. I don't do pork, and most Hawaiians have um, the ham and then the the um, pineapple. I I just I try to stay away from fattening foods. I don't know. Like I say I, I don't try not to gain weight. I'm hyper. I move. I'm constantly running around. I've got ADD and OCD fighting each other at the same time. It's annoying, but um. I'm for all meat pizzas. Nah, I can't. I can't do the all meat. Uh, we don't even do pepperoni. I think most. Of, I, my oldest does, but nobody else here does pepperoni hardly even anymore. If they're going to do it, I'm not. I, I I don't do a lot of stuff like that. And ribeye might be a different story, but. Uh, Dom saying, I guess for the meat pizza. Yeah, I just I can't. I, I only like one thing on there, and that's about it these days. Again, I'll do the anchovies and, and, and green olives, but I can only eat like a piece before I, my digestive issues would be, be an issue. I don't have the sauce. I have agents overseas send me all my stock. Okay, hey, Daryl, Carolina Picks. What Duncan's talking about, we I have people that send me stuff. I've got people that send me a quick photo, either through my text or through email. And I've got like seven email accounts. I got one just for certain people that send me stuff. They'll send me a picture and I'll go from there. Do I want it? Do I not want it? This is the price. This is what the shipping would be. I want it. I'll take it. And that most of the stuff, most of what I have comes to me. 90% of it probably comes to me straight to me through one way or another, whether I got to go sometimes pick it up, but it's, it's already there for me. I'm not searching for it. Hey, I got this. You want it? Yeah, I'll take it. Meet me here. It's mine. That's it. That's that's my sourcing. That's the majority of what I do these days. The majority of it. I don't, and I only do that because I don't want to lose the pickers. If I, the minute I, I lose a picker, it'll be the day that they come up and there's a Wilbur Harrison, you know, on Zebra or something, and it's like a ten thousand dollar forty five, and it's in their lot, something like that. Anyway, uh, hopefully you're doing okay, Daryl. Carolina Picks is in the house. I live in the middle of nowhere. I'm trying to get past that. If, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, what I would personally recommend is one day a week, if you have to, pick an area that has, even if it's an hour away, pick some place that has a bunch of stuff, draw yourself a map, and go to every single one of those places that are right in that hour drive. So you're only going to have an hour there and an hour back, and you can do a whole bunch of condensed picking. When, I, when we moved here, everywhere I've moved, I'll put it this way, everywhere I moved, I took a map and I drew a circle 50 miles away and then 100 miles away. We moved out. So we started at, you know, the close stuff and kept moving out, kept moving out, kept moving out and figured out where everything was at. I used to put 
pins, as I like visual, but I do it now in the computer, but I'll, I'll mark everything. I'll, there's a store here, there's a store there. I Excel spreadsheet a lot of stuff, so I found this at this store. This is where you look at this store. So if I don't go there for a year and I don't remember, I got it all written down. I take notes. Take a little pad of paper with you. And I know that sounds crazy, but I'm telling you how much money... Taking a map and, and marking everyone, you're going to find ones you didn't know existed. I can promise you that. The majority of people who live in even a reasonable sized town are going to miss sourcing locations right near you. I just found one. I was taking my dog to the vet the other day, last week. And there was another one. I don't know how long it's been there, but it's not a place. I don't go to the vet very often. And there was a, a, a place there. There was a sign. I didn't, didn't even know it was there. It was a little tiny out-of-the-way place. I had just been sitting at a light, I think it was, and I was just you know, looking around and there it was. So, you know, a new place. And I, I, I've gotten some of my best deals or purchases from, you know, randomly um, checking out areas just to make sure, or looking in the phone book or something. This is, you know, when we first started. So if, if you're new to it, make yourself a map and mark down what's around you. Pick out an area that has the most opportunity to source the most amount of places in one small tight area and go to there. That's what I would recommend. When, when we were in Florida, we drive around to cities an hour away sometimes. We, I mean, we drove up to Gainesville even went went picking up in Gainesville. We went up to Lake City, um, Ocala I've picked in. We even drove all the way up to Jacksonville, but we stayed the night and stuff too. But, you know, think of it think of it as a, a one source area you need to go to. So pick out what's 50 miles, 100, wherever you got to go with it. You know, if you don't make anything, don't do it again. End of story. I mean, that that's the best recommendation I can say. That's, that's what we did. Uh, I've never changed that. If I had to go somewhere else, that's what I would do. If I lost my pickers, I'd do the exact same thing. I'd get a map. I'd figure out what's around me and, and check them all out. Make some notes. Figure out what's the best place to go. I found good honey holes. You know, and it doesn't even have to be the normal place. I've had pawn shops where I've made more than I ever would have from like a thrift store or something. You know, or an estate sale even. I had a deal with with uh, what was it, the Golden Rail or shoot, it, it's in it's in uh, Winter Garden, Florida. It used to be the guy who was there bought the Astor Estate out, and he he used to hook us up with all kinds of stuff. Anyway, I know I'm off on a tangent again. Let's move on down here. Uh, oh yes, the pineapple pizza. Yeah, I don't mind as I said, but I think I would be more prone with the pickle now that Annie said that. That sounds interesting. What kind of scanner do you use on photo negatives? I've got a Visionaire V600 series. It's got the top panel is lit. So you can pull off a, pa a piece and it, it'll light up on the top to shine light through it so that when it scans it on the bottom, the light's coming from the, on the other side of the... I do glass plate slides or glass plate negatives the same way. I do that with all of it. And I've got... In fact... I've got the inserts. These go in that same scanner, actually. These, like if you got 35 millimeter negatives, you slide them in here. If you've got slides, you slide them in here, 35 millimeter slides. Uh, I use this for glass plates, four by sixes. And there's another one you can use here, but uh, you can actually make one of these yourself. And I made it, I made another one. It's not right here, it's on the scanner. But um, I made it so I can do flat um, glass plate slides that are bigger than this. I made it the exact size of the lighted panel on the V600 series. Uh, the other scanner I use is a DS, which is a, a double-sided, basically, duplex scanner. It's a DS510 by Epson as well. They run off the same software. So one app will, will handle both of them. I'll just pick which scanner I want. And even my, I've got a auto feed now, 35 millimeter scanner, where you can just set a bunch of, of, of slides in. It's by uh, um, Epson as well. And it all plugs into the same one. So I've got three scanners that all run in through the same app. So it's really easy, too. But anyway, it's a, it's a large scanner. I want to say it was it's like um, $300, maybe. I don't know. Don't buy a cheap one if you're going to buy a scanner for doing negatives. Um, and if you're, if you're doing slides now, I would recommend still getting something that will do everything because just because you only have slides now, in the future you may have other items and if you buy a cheaper one that doesn't do everything, you may be sorry later and have to buy another piece of equipment. So I always look at future possibilities when I'm going to invest in something. The, the PC that I'm using has a ton of, of um, cores. Uh, it's like a dozen cores on this thing here, and, and I, I spent the extra money to get the monster one. It was more than I needed, but I figure in the future, 
you know, if I want to do something else. We, it, it's easier for processing. I usually look at the future aspect of whatever I'm going to invest in, and I think everybody should do that too. Um, great new vid on Patreon. Oh, you've already watched it. Yeah, the other part will be up probably tomorrow or Saturday, and there'll be another one probably Sunday too. Because I still have an SEO keyword uh, video. It's already done, as I said before. But um, Flipping Ohio. Yeah, sourcing online for a lot of... If you're new, sourcing online can... It's easier to make a mistake online when you can't see what you're buying in person. That that would be my personal, personal thoughts. Um, I'm more into the tutorials for when I start selling in vintage ads. Mozilla Review, well, thanks. Uh, I have two years to learn and research before I retire from teaching, trying to take everything in, researching all I can. Start off small would be another guesstimate or another another recommendation on stuff like that. If you're just starting off, don't take on a whole bunch of niches all at once. It, it's just not practical if you're new because the only way you're going to learn something is to constantly have to look it up. How I learn postcards, anything really, is by... If I didn't know it, I look it up. I look up everything. 30,000 items in my store, I looked up every single one of those myself. Every single one. Every single one. And, and Until I learned them. So once I figured it out, I don't have to look them up anymore. But once you've looked up the same type of things over and over and over again, it doesn't take you long to remember what this price is. Is that any good? Is that any good? Is that any good? You instantly know. That's, that's how you know. That's how you learn. You constantly look it up. And the folks that don't do it, you know, that's where you're going to lose out on it. But pick off one specific niche, one specific area, learn enough of it to be dangerous out in the wild, and then pick another one. Constantly. That's what we do constantly. If, if I can figure out a new one, I'll, I'll be glad to do it. If I'm out somewhere and I see something, well, I've never sold that before. I wonder if I can do something with that. If I see quantity out there, if I see an opportunity, I'll pick up something else. You know, you never know buttons. I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds of just vintage military and uniform buttons. Now, I haven't had anything like this before. I've had a ton of individual or small bags. We used to buy five pound bags from a, a very specific place that only sells buttons online. And, um, you know, I've, I've always been into that, but it's not always available. You know, now I probably have a lifetime of worth to sell, but, you know, so just because you learn an area doesn't mean you're always going to be able to get it either. So once you figure out one, then you do need, you need to get another one. You need to get a third one and a fourth one and a fifth one. As many niches as you can have. But again, don't do them all at once. You'll, you'll be scatterbrained. You'll be looking up so many different items, you'll never remember them all. But if you're very, very centered in approach to one specific area, like I did postcards and I didn't buy a bunch of other paper items until I knew postcards. I was kind of nervous on going off and spreading off. Then once I figured out... Victorian trade cards. I, mean, I already knew non-sports trade cards because I collected them since like 1974. Um, I think one of the first sets I had of, of non-sports trade cards was the 70, well, it would be more along the lines of probably 75, 76 because I think King Kong was the first one I had and Wacky Packs 74, 75. It was Wacky Packs. That's it. Because they're still, on, they're still on a door in my house right this very second. They're the 73 series. But anyway, Pick off a couple and keep expanding on that. That's the best way to do that. Um, AC, I did over two, uh, 20000 my first year of reselling as part-time gig. I need to make that leap to the next level, which will be difficult. It, 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 is, it is difficult. Anybody... See, I, I don't get me wrong. I like watching videos of people finding stuff, but I, I don't watch them anymore because I don't get anything out of it. I'm not going to be able to find what they found at that at some random garage sale in the middle of whatever town they live in. That's not going to do me any good. And those are areas that are potluck. They're, they're potluck. You, if, if you want to be successful, you've got to pick out something that you can dominate or get really cheap that carries a good value. Those are your. Who cares what it is? Who I don't care what it is for the most part. If it's something that especially in collectibles. I could sell. I, I love collectibles. Any collectible, I wouldn't care if I had to sell. Glass-wise, a little different because I don't like messing with breakables, but it doesn't matter what you sell. 
It, it doesn't matter what it is. It just matters that, that it, it qualifies and meets certain things. Like, again, I, I've got a pros and cons for everything I sell. And people are like, well, wasting time. Do a pros and cons list of whatever you want to sell. The cons on clothing was horrendous, so we, we dumped it. We dumped it. I dumped hundreds and hundreds of thousand pieces of clothing or better real readily, real quick. You know, we sold a bunch of it and I sold some to some other folks, but, you know, that was the best choice because I couldn't list enough of it in an hour. The value wasn't there. The return rate was horrendous. People talking about renting clothing and all that stuff by returning it after 30 days. I don't have any of that. I don't get the headaches from that. Yeah, I still get headaches here and there, but it's not like that. I, I, I can list more. I get more value, more dollar per hour listed. My biggest thing these days is is how much money value can we list per hour per employee? That's what matters. You know, my my oldest son listed buttons, I think it was last night or, or was it last night? I think it was earlier yesterday. And he listed 78 or 79, but they were all $95 a piece. That's what he listed in just a few short hours. He had a couple hours before he was going out with his friends. friends and that's what he listed. Value that out. 70, that's 75 times 95. That's how much value was listed in, I think, a three-hour time span. I don't even know if it was three hours. I think it was maybe two. A couple hours. I don't want to give you the wrong information, but it was a lot of money went up, like a 1000 plus an hour. More than that. It would have been two or $3,000 worth of merchandise went up in an hour just with what he was listing. Other people were listing too. So it's, it's the dollar per hour value. And if I'm not getting it, I move to a different item. If you're not making money from what you're selling, move to a different item. When I'm in a restaurant, if, if I'm running a restaurant or a retail, if, if I'm not making enough money in the hour, I need to figure why. I need to either offer different things, bring more, more customer base in, control my labor. I mean, there's things you can do, but you've got to dig into it. You've got to understand what's going on. Let's move on to some more questions. Brian, the Oak Brook Picker, how are you doing? Be careful about turning a hobby, passion into a job that you solely rely on. Yeah, I would say if it's a hobby and you're turning it into that, you'll probably never want to do the hobby and you could mess it up. I, I would say that too. You might want to keep a lot of stuff. I do keep a lot of stuff, but I don't. I have nothing into it. So, um, and also, if you're if you're turning a hobby into a business and you're not re declaring it and reporting it, you can get yourself in trouble. And I, I would never ever recommend anybody doing anything that would be against the law in any way, shape, or form. You know, ignorance of the law is no excuse either. So you need to look into what's legal and not in your state if you're going to be a reseller in 2021. Get all the licenses. First thing after you get your local reseller license, whatever it may you may need, whether it's a sole proprietor, you just need a tax license in your state, is to get a EIN number from the federal government. Everybody should get that so you can get a, a business bank account. It's the only way I know in this state to get a business bank account is to have an EIN because you have to be federally uh, um, acknowledged as a business. And that's the number one best, easiest way to do it. Just because you have a license in your county doesn't mean you're, you're federally acknowledged. And also, like, if you name your business something, make sure you register it with the state as a DBA. Make sure you register your company name as a DBA. First, no one can steal your name. And second, then you're legally reported as, a, as that entity. And you can get paid. You can put that name anywhere you want. And you're good to go. So, anyway, I've got all that stuff figured out, too. But um, Let's see here. Annie uses a Epson uh, Perfection 700. The Visioneer is an Epson, just FYI. It's probably the model before hers. Um, I just joined Patreon yesterday. How do I find the Patreon videos? Um, all of them are readily there. It depends on the level that you're in. Um, I'm updating my, my callouts too, but um, videos are all there. If you're in the 990 plan or 999, that's where the videos are at. Um, you get, I think it's the 499 one is the forms. And there are some videos that are open to everybody just so you can kind of get to see. But at a $1.99 level, it's just pretty much support for the channel at that point. But uh, videos are available at the 999 level. Um, just FYI. I'm not sure what level you're at. I haven't, haven't looked at newbie, new uh enrollees yet i'll probably be answering more emails too uh after the show 
I've already responded to several from from. I'm sure there's one in here that's even. Yeah, there's somebody in the show right now that's that's I responded to already. Um, let's see. Where am I at? I could possibly add autographed copies of a few books that I'm also working on. Uh, let's see here. I've named a whole bunch of sites, Jasmina, there, so just FYI. I'm looking for sources now. Oh, let's see here. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks. Uh, let's see here. Where are we at? KA postage stamps. I have thousands of people collections donated to me. I've been saving them for when I retire. What are the best sites to sell stamps? Stamps are eBay, Dell Camps, and Hip Stamp. Those are the three stamp sites. You can sell them on Amazon too, but you're not going to have as much luck on Amazon. But uh, Fort Worth. I've been to Fort Worth. Hey, Lisa. How are you doing, Lisa Thompson? Yeah, I'm, I'm saying I've had a lot of interesting experiences. A lot of them weren't interesting. They weren't pleasant. Let's just put it that way. I've had some experiences in my life that I wished I could take back and never, ever have experienced. But that's that's life. I, I talk to a lot of people, and, and I thought my life was normal, and we did just what other people did. But when I tell this or tell them that story or not, they're, like, shocked. And I'm like, I don't know. I guess I've just experienced a lot. I was a military brat. We've traveled a lot. I was a regional, so we've lived in... I've been all over the country, I've, from one coast to the other. I've been all the way up from New England, all the way to California. I've been in almost every state in the Union other than, say, Alaska or Hawaii. I haven't been to Oregon yet either, but or Washington State. But I think other than that, I've been to almost every other one out there. I, I don't know. I, I, was, I was a troubled kid when I was younger, so I did a lot of stupid stuff and hung out with not some some people that aren't so great or weren't so great after my father died and I've been in some some rather rather bad situations you know the the book that I've got written is stories of stuff that has happened to me honestly and some of them aren't good some of them are talking about things that I would never want my kid doing and you know out of control teenager doing bad stuff you know that's all I can say I wished I could take those back pretty much every day of my life, but you can't you can't change things that have happened. You can only move forward. So, you know, you take it as it comes and you move on. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to do stupid things. As long as you don't do them again, you learn from them, you know. My biggest thing is hopefully that at the end of the day, my kids will do better than I did. That's all I really care about. I mean, at the end of the day, most of my, my life and efforts goes to make sure that my kids will be okay when I'm not around. I guess that's the biggest thing. Um, oh, okay, Trina. If, if go to go to there, all you got to do is type in the auction professor. Once you've already done it, it'll bring you to my page. You'll see my picture. Just click on that, and you should be good to go. Um, I'll look at it later tonight if it's under the same name. The only problem is a lot of times folks' names on here don't match what they say on Patreon, so sometimes it's confusing on who's who. Michelle's in Fort Worth, too. Um, hello from Naperville, Illinois. Timeless Jewel by Deborah. Well, how are you doing? Um, flipping in Ohio. Yeah, I, I do. We've made a lot of postcards in the past. Most of the time when I do a postcard... I'll do a design and I'll sell them all to somebody, and I, I won't even have to worry about selling them one off. But sometimes I like the the art art style. I've got three or four new ones in house. I don't know when I'll put those out yet. I might save them for fourth quarter. I'm not sure yet. Uh, let's see here. I guess I'm way behind on chat. As I always am, I'm sorry, Sam Sam BY, how are you doing? What site is good for selling Funko? Funko, I think you're talking. <laughs> eBay is great for selling Funko, from what I understand. <laughs> There's a couple pickers that sound like the guard with liquid helium. 
I'm not sure what Dom's the I love Infer Library. Oh, Interlibrary. Oh, I've seen you got a typo. I'm sorry. Yeah, I love the Interlibrary. I haven't we haven't bought a book in years. I mean, because what am I gonna do with a book? I know we just get them off in the library. And I get all the the oddball price guides, all that stuff I can just get from one of the libraries around here. Or I just do it online. I don't even have to go anywhere. And they'll bring them to the library. And you can have them checked out here locally because of the pandemic. And they'll put them in a bag. So all you can do is walk in, grab a bag, and go. You're in the library for like 30 seconds. You can do that with movies. You can get any DVD or Blu-ray you want from the local library. Put your name on a list. It'll sh when it's there, it'll be you get an email notice, and you get anything you want. Why would well, I don't rent? I don't buy anything. You know, once in a blue moon, if they don't have it, or we want to watch something on say Amazon Prime or something, I might just buy it. We started watching Family Movie Night. Um, we've been watching. Uh, the pirate movies, Pirates of the Caribbean. We're up to the third one. I think it's sitting up there right now. I know I picked up two from the, the library the other day, and I think that was one of them, the third one. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, and he's saying the same thing. Don't buy books. Don't buy them unless you have to. Now, I have bought some price guides for like buttons. stuff. I got like 1400 just in price guides for buttons, but you can't get them from the library. I did get the delivery ones from the library because there's a master set. Of these, they're huge books. Oh, my gosh. I couldn't believe how big they were, but it lists everything. And again, you're talking you can get hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of books that you would have had to purchase from the library without paying for them. Just copy what pages. Scan them on a scanner and keep a copy of them in your computer if you want. Scan the ones that are important. I do that all the time. I don't buy anything like that. My cost into stuff is, is almost zero other than the button ones, again. But I can sell those because those price guys are so hard to come by that they're so valuable. You know, So I'm not going to lose out on that. So if you have to buy something, you know, only if you have to, usually you can sell it after you've sold the items that you were using the price guide for and get your money back out of it. Or get it from the library. The library is just awesome. From my college days, I learned, I learned real quick that the library was a great tool. For my my master's thesis, and I'm sure Dom for his his like his um, dissertation, I had like a hundred plus books I took out to put my my uh, master's thesis together. So I I was pulling them from all over the place. So I had them coming from Upper Peninsula in Michigan, even you know because we had the inner inner. There's a UT, the University of Toledo, where I graduate with my master's, has a link with. Uh, some of the Michigan colleges and campuses. So you can interchange between Ohio and Michigan because of that as a, as a um, university student. So anyway, I love that. And I, if you stay, if you pay for the Alumni Association, you get access to that still. So for me, it's worth it, plus all the discounts and stuff I get. So Yeah, Dom, uh, I'll be on Dom's for the next live show, yes. Don and Dom show that'll be sometime this month. Western New York here, rural needs sources. Again, you're gonna have to look out. You're gonna have to do that map. Would be my best best recommendation. Oh, let's see here. They're talking about Funkos. Three blocks from hell, a.k.a. Las Vegas. I've been to Las Vegas once. Free source is the best source. Mr. Vikings Football 09. Yeah, that's why I say. Why, why buy anything when you don't have to? You know? Sandra Root, how are you doing? C.C. Ryder, hi, Zanesville, Ohio. Yeah, I think you've been out here before. I know the name. Uh, uh, let's see here where we're at. Oh, thanks. And again, if you haven't hit the thumbs up, I've got right at 300 people in house, 217 likes. So if you can hit the thumbs up if you are enjoying it, I would be great. Well, thank you, Linda Ortiz. Ortiz, I think Ortiz. Hopefully, I pronounced it right. Mondo X, thank you as well. Yeah, reselling is not. That's the only other videos that that aggravate me because they make it look like you're 
you're going to just get so much stuff. I, I've done videos, but I, I try to stay away from those. I'm not trying to criticize everybody for doing them, but if you're not going to give out information, Dom doesn't, but he tells you what the stuff is. He goes into details. Why did he buy it? Why didn't he buy it? I, I, a bunch of people showing me stuff that they found isn't going to do any good for me. I can find the stuff or not find it. It's not going to do any good for me. You're still going to need to look it up to see what the prices are. So to me, it's it's as long as you have an idea on what's worth worth something to begin with, it's unneeded. The, the, you, what you need is the detailed. Inf Everybody should need the detailed information to understand an entire category more so than anything else. You know, that's that's just my my take on it. You know, I get you know people complain I don't show that kind of video and I don't do the haul videos and stuff. I don't do it. I don't. I don't. I'm not going to do it just to just to try to make money off of people for watching the video. I want to do videos that I I think is educational that show you something. I do videos that I would watch, I guess, and I like to learn something. I don't. I, I entertainment's entertainment. And I don't get much out of that these days. Most of the the stuff on TV is just crap, you know. Hundred channels and nothing on TV. I think there's a song about that even. Uh, well, thank you, Ka, as well. Well, thank you, Brian the Oak Brook Picker. Targeted sourcing is what I do. I don't do anything else but target sourcing. And that's a legitimate art. That's what I do. That's why I don't source. That's why I don't do sourcing videos. I don't I don't I don't need to. I have no reason to randomly drive to garage sales. If one happens to be there and I'm driving right by and it looks okay, I might stop in. But I don't have to. It's more like fun. It kills it kills the excitement sometimes for me because I already know what I'm going to get. I guess that's the biggest loss, but, you know, I'm making the money. I still get the good stuff. I still get – if if I could show what I what we have in our possession now, I think some people would think I was like a hoarder, but I'm. I've, it's all back stock. It's not going to die. It's, the value is not going to go down. It's already paid for. I think we're going to end it in just a few minutes here. I know I'm going a little long today. I haven't been paying attention to the time. Uh, thanks again, Kay. Uh, I, the commercials, I like vintage, and the commercials to me are reminiscent of why I like what I like. Most of the commercials are all from 80s or before. Um, they're all stuff that I grew up on. It's all nostalgia to me. For I'm, I'm, I might literally get into the, the PhD program, and it would be American Cultural Studies. It all ties to all this stuff. It's, it's all tied to this. My paperwork's in now, but it's all tied to all this stuff. This is, this is why I like it. I like the the historical aspect of it. I like knowing the history of stuff, TV shows and movies and toys and stamps and, and Americana in general, the advertising aspect of it, all that kind of stuff, the marketing approaches and, and all that stuff is cool to me. Vintage photos and paper in general, anything paper, anything that wasn't made to last, I think is cool. Um, Harlan, see, I, everybody asked me on my store name. If you want to know what my store is, watch one of the videos on what sold on eBay video. I don't type it out and I don't promote my store on here because I'm not trying to get people to buy my stuff. It's not why I'm on YouTube. I'm not trying to get anybody that needs to go to my store that they can find it. I'm not trying to promote my store to people. I'm not marketing my stuff towards you. And that's what a lot of people don't get because I guess a lot of other channels do that and that's just not me. I'm not, you're not, most of the people out here are not the customer base that I have, and, you know. And, and I, 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 the other thing that aggravates is when people try to ask me questions on eBay. That's my place of business. I don't answer or respond to questions from people that watch my channels here on my business page, and that's because I'm not the. I don't answer most of the emails on there. First off, on on eBay, I don't need to. I've got other people that do that, and I don't have the time. I, I work about and do other things. So. I don't answer emails on eBay. I know there's another channel or a couple other channels that even put that. We don't answer messages and don't uh, contact us through eBay unless it's about an item. And that's how I keep it too, too. But let me slide down here. Creating Happy Mondays, how are you doing? Is there a source online? Are you talking about buying? If you're going to try and buy glassware and stuff offline, that's not doable in my book. Not to turn on and resell because you've got the shipping and you've got the weight. You've got storage. You've got breakability. I would never 
buy glassware from anywhere but in person. Anything glass or ceramic. I have never once bought anything like that offline. I try to never buy anything offline. If I can't see it and touch it, I don't like to buy it. I, I've just seen so many people with just horror stories. Now, like the animation, that's a different story. It was a worked out deal and the, I know where he got them from and you know, stuff like that's a little different story. But I had pictures of it ahead of time off. It wasn't eBay related, but I mean, in general, I don't like to buy offline. I don't like to do it because I can't tell what I'm getting. Uh, I don't I don't like to get screwed over. I don't like any of that stuff. So for me, I, I got to see it and touch it to be interested in it. That's just me, though. Monica Ottaway started my journey this weekend. Well, welcome aboard. Welcome in. Uh, Goodwill has an online version you can check out. Yeah, I'm not the the Goodwill's been pulling stuff. I I'm I'm not a big fan around here. Goodwill isn't. No, I don't do that. But where are we at? What advice do you have for sourcing in a small town area? Yeah, another question on online. Again, I'm not I'm not at all a fan of online sourcing in any way, shape, or form. I would rather avoid it because I can't tell what I'm getting. Somebody else that, that I, I've conversed with in the past got uh, suckered on a $300 purchase because didn't know the person, he trusted them, and you never can tell. And if you're sourcing on some places, once you buy it, it's yours. There's no returns on some of those auction sites, on like auction, the online auction platform. So you've got to be careful on some of those. If you're in a small town, I'd figure out how close the, the best area is close to you. If it's 45 minutes away, you do that trip once a week or whatever, and you hit every single place again, draw a map, write out everything, get a path that you're going to go before you even leave your house so you know exactly where you're going. Hit all those. Don't be wasting any time. Go straight to the first source. Get them in a good pattern so you're not going to be backtracking or anything else, and hit every single one in that place. A 45-minute trip one way is fine in my book, even an hour, if I think I can get something or, or there's at least five or six good places to go to. And you're not going to know until you get there, but, you know, that's, that's my best recommendation. We lived out in the country before. When we were in Mississippi, I lived, it was 20 minutes to a grocery store. So if that gives you any idea, I lived out in the country. I lived in Hickory, and that Meridian was the biggest city, and, and even the next town over was 20-some-odd minutes away. So there was nothing out where I lived. And even the, the biggest town over that was 20 miles away or 20 minutes away was Newton. And there was, I think there was one tiny thrift store in that whole area. So, you know, there just wasn't much there. So you, you've got you've to gotta drive. So I ended up, we drove to Meridian. Or I drove to Jackson, which was almost an hour away when we were there to source. I do Jackson and the whole works. And Jackson had a whole bunch. So it was a two-hour round-trip drive. And in traffic, maybe two and a half total. But it was worth it. I hit every single store we could get to. You know, we left early, so we were at the first location the minute they opened up. So I wasn't wasting any time. We were home by, you know, 4 or 5 o'clock. If we hit all the stores and everything, and we were fine. That's what I did. Well, thank you, Rescue and Resell. Very, very thank you for the uh, $9.99 Super Chat. Grateful for that. Honestly, no, honestly sincere for that. Thank you. Again, I forget it's there until somebody does it. But thank you very kindly. I do honestly and sincerely appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Where are we at? Uh, David Hall. Uh, getting into reselling records. Is it worth getting a record player to play each record? I don't play. If you don't know records, you're going to have to play a bunch of them to know if there's skips and stuff. Once you've done records and you know your records, I don't play... 99% of the records I get. I don't. I don't have to. I can tell you if they're going to play or not because you can see them. You know, you can tell. You know, if, uh, like, if there's a scratch record, if my nail can go into it, I got to play it, especially if it's a high dollar one because those are the times where something's going to skip on you or might, might, you know, cause a blip at, at that spot every time. Once you know them, you know, you don't have to worry. But if you're just starting off, just get yourself a cheap, like, $60 Ion digital turntable that plugs straight into your PC. That's what I would get. Um, there's a bunch of free software. Chances are, if you get the Ion, it's going to come with two different uh, easy vinyl converter, I think, is the one that comes with that. It's a cheaper, low-grade um, uh, quality, but it's fine for starting off. I mean, I wouldn't worry about it. If, if, if you take care of it, 
you can safely test even higher value records with one of those cheap players. It just won't sound as good if you want to supply a clip is what, what the, the drawbacks are. I have a very, we have a very expensive turntable. We've got a couple of them, actually. I've got three that I can use. There's two that are always plugged in, in two different places. Because we, if I put something on a turntable, I usually just wanting to listen to it. Just for my own personal, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't usually play any of them. I don't have to, especially 78s. I, I haven't played a 78 in years, you know. Um, unless it's like, a, I'll take that back. I played a rockabilly the other day only because I hadn't heard it. But I, I don't play most of them. You don't need to once you know your records. Again, that goes with knowing the areas you're selling them. Once you understand how the area is and grading and all that stuff, and it, it, you're not going to have to do it again. Once you've comprehended all those aspects of grading records, you're done. That's the biggest, hardest part is grading a record. That's the biggest, hardest part. And when in doubt, I always would recommend grading a little less than you think it would. If you think, if you're, you're not sure, you're worried it might not be a VG plus, do a VG or do a VG minus and be done with it. I would rather have them be happy that the item was better than they thought than less than they thought, always. I'd rather give a few bucks away by undergrading it to make somebody happy than overgrading it and being wrong. I, I, that's just me. It's not worth your reputation. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna end it off here. I didn't realize we were going this long here. I need to pay more attention to the clock, I guess, these days. Again, I hope you enjoyed the conversation. If you didn't hit the thumbs up, please hit the thumbs up if you're enjoying it. This is me. This is the truth. This is literally what we were talking about today. Selling in 2021, 100% fully doable, better now than anywhere else. You just got to understand all the little aspects of your market to be able to get this, to be able to move on, and to be able to grow your business and make the money you want. I'm, uh, this is truthful. It's just you've got to spend the time and invest. None of this is easy. Anybody who tells you that or shows you just finding everything every day, all they do is find $1,000 items, they're not being sincere with you. you. You need to understand how hard this can actually be. If it's not for you, it's not for you. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's fully fully possible to make a full-time living. We do it. I know many people who do in 2021. Our business has grown. It hasn't went down. So I'm telling you right now, it's gotten better every single year. More challenges, but there's more opportunity too. But we'll let it go out there. And I do thank everybody for coming on. I got a new video coming out tomorrow. I got two other videos pending for the art professor as well. I've got a whole new topic coming on there interesting one it's going to show you some interesting vintage things tied to horror movies and stuff too so if you're interested keep an eye out for the art professor videos as well